questions 1 to 4. Hello. Hello. Is that Appleton 363? It is Harding speaking. Oh, um, are you, I mean, I'd like to speak to the secretary of the Arts Club. Yes, speaking. Oh, hello. My name is Francis Drew. I just moved to the area. My classmate and I, and we'd be interested in joining the Arts Club, but we'd like some more information, really. You know, about joining and the sorts of activities you do. Yes, well, what do you want? Our calendar. Ask at the library. I'll make sure that there are plenty there by Thursday. That's all right for you? Yes, fine, thank you. But um, would you mind telling me how much it costs to join? Membership fee for an adult is £2.50 per year, of course. What exactly does club membership entitle one to? Entitle you to? Oh, uh, for a start, there's the uh, club events. You get invited to them, of course. They're for members and only... Um, they are free. What sorts of events are there? I mean... You'll see what they are when you get hold of a calendar. But, well, there's club evening, for instance, once a month. Usually Wednesdays from 8 till 10. And whereabouts do you hold them? Club evenings. Uh, the, the beach pavilion. Do you know it? No, I don't think I do. It's not near the seafront, is it? No. Up past the tennis courts on Park Avenue. You know where that is. No, I'm afraid I don't. We'd soon find it, though. Quite good. I don't know what your interests are... Music? Got any musical talents? I'm not sure about talents exactly. I like music. We both do. Do either of you sing? Oh, yes. We've both been in choirs. Well, there you are, then. The club's got a very fine choir. Very fine. I'm in it myself, as a matter of fact. We have practices every Friday evening. And it's no good just thinking of joining if you can't make the practices. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. What's the procedure? I mean, if we decide to join the choir or any of the other activities, how do we go about it? You can't get into the choir without an audition. As far as the other sections are concerned, members have to apply through the section secretary in the first place. Yes, right. And the fee again. I've written it down somewhere. £2.50 each. And where do we send it? To you? No, I'm the secretary. It's the treasurer who deals with that. I'll give you his name if you want to write it down. Yes, please. His name is Hosegood. H-O-S-E and then Good. Yes. Initial P, address 3 Clay Hill, Appleton. Right, and it's all right to send a cheque? That's the usual, yes. Payable to Appleton Arts Club. Appleton A... Double P L E T O N. Oh, and uh, better put your address on the back as you're new. Uh, and incidentally, there's a newsletter out three times a year just to keep club members up to date with what's going on. They they're sent to everyone. That's good. Um, just one last thing. Would you mind telling me what the other sections are so that I can tell my classmate and we? The players. That's our act group. I've told you. Choir, you know about. There's the gramophone circle, the music workshop, the literary and discussion group. Oh, that one meets in different members' homes. Then there's the studio workshop. And um, what have I missed out? Oh, yes, the art talks. That's the lot, I think. Ah, the film society. That's the other one. Got them all. Ah, oh, yes, just about. Thank you very much. You've been very helpful. Not at all. Pleased to assist. And uh, look forward to meeting you and your classmate at the club. Yes, thank you. Goodbye then. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a talk given by Madeline. She is going to introduce the recreational facilities on campus and in town. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Madeline Stewart, and I'm here to tell you about the recreational facilities available on campus, and also to tell you something about what the town has to offer. You may already know that your student's union membership also includes membership of the sports union, which provides a range of sporting and recreational facilities on campus much the same as those in most British universities. The sports union has football, tennis, and cricket teams in local competitions. And really, most sports are catered for in some way on campus, even if they're just social matches. In the building itself, there are fitness classes and a full gym, including weights. The sports union can also provide cheap tickets to some major sporting events. And to keep you up to date with everything available, there's a weekly newsletter distributed around the campus. You should check this to find out the names and phone numbers of the contact people for each sport or activity you are interested in. Er, yes, did you have a question? Yes, uh, apart from what you've just said, does the sports union offer individual help in any of its activities, uh, for example, in getting fit and healthy? Yes, we do. The sports union has a fitness assessment clinic every Friday staffed by the resident sports trainer, who can provide advice on the best program for you and refer you to various charts. I'm sure you all realize that for any medical assessment or health problem, you should go to the university medical service. The sports trainer can also advise you on a suitable training program using the weights. And now on to Ashbury. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. And now on to Ashbury. For a town of its size, Ashbury has some unusually good leisure and sporting facilities, most of which are near the center of town and easily reached by bus from this campus. There's a new, well, almost new, Olympic-sized swimming pool. That's not quite in the central town area, but it's only a five-minute walk from the bus stop. Above the pool, there's a high-tech fitness center that any of you more serious fitness lovers would need to check out. Then, in the center of town, there's a sporting complex called the Anderson Center, which contains squash courts and facilities for a number of other indoor sports, such as basketball. And just around the corner from the Anderson Center, in the main street there, is an indoor bowling alley. All of these facilities are listed in the weekly newsletter, so I encourage you all to look through it and... That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. 
Part 3. You will hear a discussion among three students who are organizing an international film festival at their college. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen carefully to the first part of the discussion and answer questions 21 to 24. Thanks for coming to this meeting on such short notice, Anna and Veronica. It looks like we have just become the organising committee for this year's International Film Festival. We've all just met, so perhaps we should start by an introduction with a bit of background from each of us. OK. I'm Anna. I finished three years of a languages degree in Sweden, where I come from. This year I decided to study overseas to get to know a different part of the world. I'm also a big fan of European cinema, especially French and Italian. Those are the languages I majored in, along with English. To me, film is a great way to learn about the rest of the world. I was in the film club at my university, so when I saw the notice asking for volunteers, I thought it would be a good way to meet people and get involved in something I really enjoy. Thanks, Anna. My name is Veronica and I come from Italy. I'm doing graduate studies in English literature. I went to some of the films in the festival last year and enjoyed them. I especially like the video interviews. That was when I decided to get involved. I used to do film reviews for our student newspaper back home. Hi, I'm Chris from Scotland and I'm in fourth year journalism. Cinema is my hobby. Last year I joined the organising committee just like you have now and somehow this year I've ended up in charge. I'm actually able to use my coordinating work on the festival towards a credit for one of my courses. I have to write up a report on the festival with recommendations, so that's an extra motivation for me. So I hope this is going to be a good experience for us all. OK, where would you like to start? How about a general overview of the festival? I don't really know much about it. Well, the film festival was started by International Student Society five years ago and has grown every year. It is held over four nights during study break. Wednesday to Saturday. Normally we show three films a night. Last year we tried to choose films from different parts of the world that fit together in some way, maybe a similar theme. Or we could feature a type of film like action films or science fiction. Now you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen to the rest of the discussion and answer questions 25 to 30. Who picks the films? It's up to us on the committee to decide. You mean we get to pick all the films ourselves? What a hard decision! There are so many to choose from. Well, that's the fun part. We have this catalogue of independent distributors. The films are listed by language and have a short summary. We just have to go through it to find a good combination of films that will attract an audience. Veronica mentioned something about interviews. How does that fit in? We set up cameras in the foyer of the theatre and did live interviews before, during intermission and after the screening. Anyone from the audience could come up and talk about the film. The Broadcasting and Journalism School set it up and ran the interviews. They were shown on big screens around the lobby and in the theatre. It went over really well. We had a long lineup of students waiting to be interviewed on TV. Everybody wanted their minute of fame. Great idea. Yeah, it worked really well. We should certainly do something similar again. Maybe even develop the idea further, 
like a website with audience reviews and discussion so we can get as much participation and involvement as possible. Hey, that's a good idea. Can I ask a question? None of the films are in English, right? Are they dubbed or subtitled? Well, we do occasionally choose a film in English, but only from unusual places where the dialect is so strong they sometimes need subtitles, like the Caribbean or even Scotland. The majority of films in the festival are foreign language, dubbed in English. We've learned from experience that students don't like reading subtitles. Maybe they read too much already. Whatever the reason, the subtitled films get smaller audiences, so we avoid them as much as possible. So how large an audience can we expect and how much does it cost to get in? It costs $5 per film or a $20 pass for the whole event. All 12 films for the real movie fan. We would have broken even last year, except for a bad storm on the Friday night. We almost had to cancel the whole thing. But overall, we had a good turnout. More than 2,000 people in four days. Oh, that's what I was wondering about. The financial part. Where does the funding come from? What kind of budget do we have? The festival is subsidised by the Student Council. We generate money through advertising and through admission charges. We'll go over the budget in details a little later, but we've got lots of work to do in the meantime. I guess we have to start pretty soon. Well, I think by the 1st of March at the latest. We need to select all the films. Then we have to find some advertisers to sponsor the event. That shouldn't be too hard. We'll just start with last year's list. Our deadline for that should be the middle of March. By the end of March, we need to design the programme. Then we can get posters made up and distributed in April. Like you said, we need some clever promotion, something to generate interest and get people talking. We have four months to get ready. It should be enough time. OK, where do we start? Let's start by talking about films, since that is the best part, and see what we come up with. What was the best film you saw last year? That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You'll hear a program on the city of Brisbane. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Today in our Around the World programme, Mr White is going to recommend a charming city to you, Brisbane. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever been to Brisbane? Well, if you are looking for a mild climate, a relaxed atmosphere and a lot of culture, Brisbane might be the place for you. Its sunny cafes and offshore islands attract surfers and sun lovers, but it is also the arts capital of Queensland, with many museums and art galleries. This thriving artistic setting mixes well with Brisbane's beach town atmosphere. Together these two qualities make Brisbane a very desirable place to live. No wonder since 1980 over a half a million Australians have moved here. Brisbane is now Australia's third largest city. 
English settlers living in Australia established Brisbane in 1842. At that time, more than a hundred thousand Aboriginal Australians were living in Queensland. As the settlers discovered Queensland's resources, more and more of them moved in. Regretfully, the settlers drove the Aboriginal Australians from their lands. By 1859, Brisbane had grown into a prosperous city. In 1988, the world watched as Brisbane hosted the World Expo. This international fair showcased new technology. But it also showed off the city of Brisbane to the world. Brisbane also hosts a wide range of events year-round. In April, everyone can enjoy a few laughs at the comedy festival, and movie lovers will enjoy a film festival that takes place every August. For two weeks in September, there is an outdoor festival of the arts. In October, a music festival draws a large crowd. And in January, you can see Brisbane's most bizarre event. You may be surprised to hear that. The annual cockroach races. That's right, people really do train and race cockroaches. Brisbane's nice climate and compact design makes it easy to explore on foot. Follow the golden arrows in the footpath around the city centre. This will lead you on a tour of Brisbane's historical district. From the city centre, take a boat across the Brisbane River to Southbank. This area is popular for its bike paths, beach and weekend market. Hundreds of artists display their wares at this market. It's a great place to pick up some interesting handicrafts. Well, I think what you must be interested in is the unique native animals. Yes, you shouldn't visit Australia without seeing its trademark animals, the koala and kangaroo. The Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary has both. It is located just outside the city centre in beautiful Parkland. You can hold one of the park's 130 koalas or feed the kangaroos. Another quiet refuge from the city is Mount Kuta, about eight kilometres from Brisbane. On a clear day, it offers spectacular views of the city. It also has hiking trails and beautiful gardens. Along the Brisbane River, a sunset cruise is also very relaxing. The areas around Brisbane are impressive. A coastal drive south of Brisbane will take you along the Gold Coast. This famous coastline boasts some of Australia's best beaches. Stradbroke Island is another easy day trip from Brisbane. A cliff on the island called Point Lookout offers a great view. From there you can see dolphins swimming below. Brisbane Forest Park, to the north of Brisbane, is a great place for hiking and camping. These great getaways, along with Brisbane's own laid-back charm, make this city an ideal place to visit. That is the end of part four. 